everyone, Luke here and welcome back to the channel. So I've finally got a chance to use the 3D printer now I've kicked Rob off it for a couple hours. <laughs> but I've got to say something, this is my first ever time using any 3D printer ever. Filament or resin, I've never used the technology before in my life so I'm a little bit excited. So to get all the stuff set up I basically just followed Rob's videos and when it comes to the Chitterbox um, software I checked this video out which was number 1337 and I just followed the settings and got it all set up properly. So what I'm actually going to be printing is the very last part of my steampunk lamp and if you guys have been tuning into the stream recently you're going to know I've been working on that for a little while and I'm not going to specify the amount of time because it has been a while but this is the very last part that I need and this is going to be a cage for the bulb because I really want that bulb to be a uh, oh what's the word I'm thinking of? I want it to be a standout point of the whole lamp. I don't want to cover it up with a lampshade, I want it to be C. So I've opted for this cage to slip over the top, so it's in actual full view. And I just pulled this off Thingiverse, and it's really nice. All I had to do was resize it to the parameters of my printer, and now because of the Chitterbox settings are all correct, I just drop it in, and then I can just slice it. And once it's sliced, I'll stick it onto the USB, take it downstairs, stick it into the uh, uh, into the printer, and then just click print pretty much. Well, hopefully it's going to be that easy. So, this is what the Thingiverse file looks like. Doesn't that just look so cool? I mean, I'm not going to have the enclosure that goes over the, uh, the actual bulb itself, the one that hides it, but I'm going to have all the external parts there. And I think that's going to tie in really nicely with the style of the lamp, um, especially once I've uh, spe uh, sorry, especially once I've sprayed it up a nice colour, and that's going to tie everything in really nicely. So the first thing we've got to do is click slice, and now it's slicing. So I'm going to put that onto the USB and then go downstairs. Now that's done, I am just far too excited and I really want to get this going. If you're interested in actually how to get this to print and how to set it up for printing. Rob did a video on that and the number for that video is 1338. So if you're interested, go check that out because I'm not actually going to go through it, but I will put my USB in there, turn it on and then start printing. Right, so after around three and a half hours, four hours, the print has finally done. So what we're going to do is take it out and clean it up. There we go, our final print has been done and I've glued the rings onto the actual cage itself and this is what it looks like. And let me give you a quick close up of that. How awesome does that look? And now, because this is printed out for my project, if I do grab my lamp, it will actually get mounted at around there and it will enclose the bulb really nicely. So that does look really cool. Considering that this is my first ever time using any type of 3D printer ever, I managed to pull off two successful prints and print something that is actually really really nice and all I did like I said at the beginning of the video was just to follow Rob's videos and it worked really nicely but with that being said that does bring me to the end of this video I really hope you enjoyed it and if you have any questions don't hesitate to put them in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them all anyway guys I hope you have a great day and I'll see you later